Ladies and gentlemen, this first panel is with the awesome Thrilling Adventure Hour. Please welcome to the stage Ben Acker, Ben Blacker, Mark Gogliardi, Hal Lublin, Aaron Ginsberg, Arden Myron, and Amy Acker. Thank you. Hi. Before I start, did uh, Mark, did I say your last name right? Gagliardi. I, I fucking hear nailed it. You wow. Did. I thought I, I heard did. that coming in. I was like, I should got that. Yeah, I was filled with self doubt, but now. It was great. You got my name wrong. What? <laughs> you're, you're like, your name is John Smith. Uh, yeah, Aaron, Aaron Ginsburg, wreck, wreck that. Yeah. Aaron Ginsburg. Yes. Okay, good. Present. Is it? What's your name? Arda Marine. Woo! Okay. No, that's Thank wrong. You. You it doesn't look like name. it. It Arden. doesn't. No, that's it, not your it name. doesn't look like Marine and Arden is not. Are you sure you're pronouncing it right? You know what? I I might not be. All right, we'll look into that. Did I leave somebody out? Did I leave a name off of the list? Did I get everybody right? Good. Okay. Well, my my moment of self doubt is now over. I'm going to keep drinking this cup of c coffee. You look amazing. May I just drink you in? You look amazing. <laughs> Does anybody read Saga? <laughs> I kind of, I kind of got it right, right? I kind of got it right. I, I didn't get the part right where someone drew my abs. I have to draw my own abs and I'm a terrible drawer, which is why they're not, I have one ab and not six. Um, so uh, I did this last year and have you guys done this before? Is this your first time at Nerd HQ? Oh honey, this is not God bless you, all right, good. I'm just, um, you know, it's, it's not the kind of thing where we have a set thing. We're just gonna, we're just gonna get into it, right? And we have to talk gonna... about Zach Levi for an hour, right? Is that yeah, correct? we do, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, well, I, are there children here? Shit. Um, I was gonna say the worst thing you could possibly hear at this time of the day. Um, uh, no, we're gonna. We already, I already talked about Zach and Ayahuasca Mia, so we, I think we should just go to questions. Let's do it. Or you guys could just take pictures and we could sit here in silence. Oh, do you mind if we nap? Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. Question for Hal. What's the best name? Get on the Hold microphone. on. Wait, Cowboy. Didn't I yell at you yesterday? Yeah. You, you have a microphone now, so you're allowed to talk. This is gonna go great. <laughs> ben, we have talked about you yelling at fans. Not fans, fan. <laughs> go ahead. Hal, what's the best- No questions for Hal. You? Benjamin, please. What yes? Was, what? <laughs> what? I couldn't hear you. That was so racist. Okay. They keep messing with your name tags. What's the best one they've given you? Well, yesterday, uh, anybody who was at our panel at Comic-Con, uh, they, they misspelled my name again, uh, Lubin. They left the L out. Classic it is, spelling. It is Lublin Classic for everybody here, if you're watching. I did, I did, I got your There's name on. the camera, who knows? Uh, By the way, you should just switch it to Lublin, that's way sexier. That's what yeah. it was. The, the women in our family long ago decided it was Lublin, and now it is my curse. I'm writing bear. a letter. Thank you. So, uh, dear Grandma Loveland, they had uh, You're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong about yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I thank you for letting me invent this time machine just for this purpose. Um, so they had the wrong name tag for. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> You're fired. So. During, uh, during the panel, somebody from the staff came up to me with a note that said, I'm so sorry, how do you actually spell your name? I said, it's fine, this is how you spell it, but if you're gonna bring me another name tag, make it worse. So halfway through the panel, I got, uh, I think Hal Wansel was my new name. Yeah. So let's just go with that. Can we throw that up on the lower third? Wansel, W-A-N-T-Z-E, <laughs> ac uh, accent aigu. Yeah. <laughs> so there, that's the question. That's the answer. You can leave now, thank you. Fan. <laughs> Don't be, uh, I love how people are just videotaping and not asking questions or interacting with us. Come also, on, you guys, technology is ruining human interaction. I see a that lady has a hand up. There we go. Also, you don't have to video it. First of all, it's no, there are no tapes in those phones. There are tapes, <laughs> you know there's that, tape inside. Right? There's a little cassette tape. Second rotating. of all, you know it, they're doing it themselves. It's streaming. <laughs> You don't have to video it. Is this a virtual reality experience that we're in right now? You, it's wait, a real we... reality experience oh, that we're in right now. Uh, can can we pause for a can moment uh, for, before that question? So backstage there is this virtual reality thing and Arden tried it out. Can you describe that experience? Okay, this is also my first Comic-Con and <laughs> so my... Yay! 
Nice. So my synapses are already like, I mean, you, it's like crazy. It's, it's crazy naturally in there. And then you put me in Comic-Con and like shake it for a while. And then you throw me Sunday morning into virtual reality. It is, none of us are ever going to talk to another human again. <laughs> We're just, it's, it's basically like driving with Jason Statham and you get to kill bad guys and it was so awesome. <laughs> And I'm never gonna leave my house again. I like it when you kind of point towards me and. Jason Statham, you guys. To me as Jason I love Bill. your work. I love your work. Thank you. You were very Big funny and spy. Very funny and spy. Well, we were all watching too because it's up on the monitor back there. And at the beginning, Arden's like, ah, oh, uh, where? But with like within 30 seconds, she's boom, grab a clip. She's Jason Bourne, just yeah. taking people out. Thank you so much. It was awesome. I took a self-defense class once and I'm like strangely strong. And it was like some of the other people would like panic and I could actually do like the matrix, like, come on, yeah, we're getting this, get at it. Uh. My dream is to be like uh, Lara Croft. Too that rare. was super Too rare. hot, actually. It was a little oh sexual. God. I totally want to attack you now, but oh I'm afraid because you're gonna kick me in my nuts. Oh my god, let's do that. Let's make that happen. <laughs> well, Look at those long legs, milady. They're Once long, the but very oh. useless. Useless. Where's that question? Um, the guys that made the trip down under, I'm just wondering how you enjoyed the trip down there. Oh, man. Uh, the, yes, uh, we just got back from Australia and New Zealand. Are you from Australia or New Zealand? Australia. Australia, and she just asked if we enjoyed the trip. And yeah, a whole lot. Uh, it's, it's a great country. Everybody's insanely friendly, and uh, Australia was great. New Zealand, I think there's a bunch of uh, Lord of the Rings nerds up here, too. So. Is that the only thing that New Zealand has ever done? Because that's the only thing that New Zealand seems to care no, about. I say, I, we had the, such a great time. It's a beautiful country, and everybody is so nice. And all I am doing is trying to figure out how I can get back to New Zealand, get some sheep, and just settle down. God, thank like, God that's how it writing ended. Is thank fine. God that's how that sentence ended, because it could have ended a lot of ways. I think you know what I mean by settle down. I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's, there are kids in the audience. Are there really, though? Yeah. Too late. <laughs> How old? <laughs> little, little. Okay. No, no, we'll be clean. I think the I think the age of the age of NSFW is eight. Hi, Amy. Uh, and I just want to ask you a question. I've been seeing your panels from from yesterday, and I just want to ask: Do you, have you like been going around Comic Con? On Saturday and Sunday, like go around or just just like leave. Well, this was like my excuse because I was only in a few episodes of the show, but I really wanted to come to a panel at Nerd HQ, so I'm kind of oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of just in the audience. So I'm just pretending I'm down there, and I have some questions for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's been awesome. Obviously, I've talked a little too much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've had a great time. You ever I haven't done dress? virtual reality yet, though. I, I'm yet. ready. <laughs> it's uh, really for, fun. For those of you who don't know the Thrilling Adventure Hour, uh, by, by a round of applause, you, you guys know it, right? You had to buy tickets <laughs> to come here. But for those of you who may not be overly familiar, uh, Mark, Ben and I write the show, uh, Mark and Hal, uh, have been cast members since the very beginning, 10 years uh, strong. Aaron has been directing the show from the very beginning. And Arden and Amy are two of our favorite guest stars. We, we get them out as often as we can, so we thought it would be fun to bring them out on this panel as well. So just to, to so everyone knows where we are. Context. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you know, I'm really sad. Do you have a microphone? I don't, but I can talk to you loud. Nope. Not all the way through nice the internet, out. you can. Nice <laughs> I just want to let you know that I'm really sad. I never got to see you guys live. I've been planning some kind of trip to go up there, and all the tickets were always 100% yes. sold out. So, but so your podcast archives are amazing. Watch, uh, re listen to them, people. Hal cannot wait to get that microphone back from you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there's there's another over? opportunity. Oh, there's another opportunity that's to see the show. Um, on, uh, on film, in our concert film. Uh, and also, we're gonna be in New York in, uh, in the fall. So you said you were gonna make a trip up to see us. How far are you willing to go? All the way to New York City? 
Uh, we're also doing LA Podfest. Are you doing LA Podfest? I am doing LA Podfest. Yeah. yeah, which is the weekend of September 18th. Yes, so that that's coming right. up pretty soon. And that's, that's like that's, that's live streaming. Yeah. Uh, so you can come to it, or you can watch it on your. The thing computer. about coming to it is that you could get so many podcasts for your little uh, like sweaty dime. If you went to that, you could have this one. You could have some other ones you'd never heard of. Dimes need not be sweaty. You can um, pay however you want. All dimes, oh, but are, dimes are always which, sweaty. Dimes come sweaty from the factory. At the thing, you can smell the actors. You can smell the actors. That's the difference between live theater and streaming it in your homes. I wish you could. I wish you could smell this. Yeah, it's amazing. We all smell Al, like Hal bacon. Hal and I have been up oh, for a while. I smell like bacon. Yeah, but that's a cop. awesome, a cop. though. <laughs> that's. Like... I hit the I hit the breakfast buffet hard with Ben this morning. Oh, tell me about the waffles. We ate everything in San Diego this morning. You, you show up at the Sheridan, and when you sit before the buffet, they go, "Do you want waffles delivered to your table?" And we were like, "Yes, we do. Of yes, one hundred percent." What kind of table would it? Be? Just as like a starter, you start with a Belgian waffle, and then you go eat everything else. How did you win this morning so hard already? What? You know what? I just hit the Sheridan buffet big time. Dude. Big time. Is this sponsored by the Sheridan? buffet. <laughs> so they give you the waffle first, so it's like the waffle is your plate. The, wa yeah, They're the like, waffle. Here, we're going to bring you a food made plate exactly. to put all your stuff on. It's like there. a tostada. You get to eat the waffle bowl. And I didn't notice that your purse is still full of bacon. I didn't know you could take it with you. You know what? That you could account for the smell. I, uh, I just shoved that thing filled with bacon. <laughs> Again, winning, winning the morning, essentially. <laughs> That's how you win any morning. Hi. Um, First of all, I want to thank Nerd HQ for bringing Thrilling Adventure Hour into our lives. We do too. So do we. And now a word from our sponsor. We just dis we discovered you uh, when you did your first panel a couple years ago. We're like Thrilling Adventure Hour. What is that? Who are these people? Who are these people? What do they do? And then we found out that you had a show in town, and we're like, okay, click. You know, get the tickets. Let's go see the show. You she know? got tickets. Oh, I got tickets. <laughs> Then Good we found out, Yeah, then we found out about the podcasts and the books and the comics. And um, so we started going to the L.A. shows because we live by L.A. And that. And then last year when you were in town, you did the mashup and we got tickets for that. We did so a crossover with the Welcome to Night Vale uh, podcast. Have you heard of it? Yeah. So that was exciting. And that brought that into our lives and everything like that. And then we went to... Um, Largo last year in November to see Nathan and Keegan Mike and Keegan and all that. And the two hour <laughs> was like not an hour, it was two hours that night. And that this was is quite finished. a travelogue. I know. This is I was gonna history. say basically you're just gloating that your life is so much more awesome <laughs> than everybody else here. You know, April twenty four bacon. At the breakfast yeah. buffet, waffle used as plate. <laughs> Delicious? Yes. So my thing is Where do you stay when you come to LA? I live in the area, so it was like, oh, yeah. Will you make so, bacon for us? Can we come over for bacon and waffles? It, you know what? I will. <laughs> okay, I'll be there, for real. Okay. Um, so my question is, oh. it just seems like when I found you, I lost you. Because you're no, no longer doing regular shows and anything like that. So. Did you not see the super secret show we did last night at Comic-Con? Anyone here see that super secret show? No. It was a crossover with Night Vale. It was super Pail. secret. Was it? It, was all, it was just the, everyone you see here alone in a hotel room doing the show. Oh. Is anyone else there? So um, one of my favorite parts of the show is when you guys try not to break character and you just try to keep going. What is your favorite moments after over all these 10 years of like a moment that just like, a, a, yeah, like a favorite moment or a favorite breakdown or a favorite something. And it's gotta be like the first thing you think of, you know? I want to. I just want to say it, it's always flattering to Ben and me that people's favorite parts of the show are the parts we don't write. <laughs> so thank you for that. I don't know. I don't know why we would stop doing the show. Now you know. You know we wrote in every flub. Only for Jackson. Only for Mark Evan Jackson. <laughs> I will say that because he's perfect. He's perfect. To, to add to that or or jump onto that is that there are many times if if, if anyone here has seen the live show, one of my favorite moments. Uh, which happens usually every show where something happens on stage, often scripted, yeah. often scripted, and people backstage laugh loud enough to be heard by the audience. <laughs> and I, whenever that happens, and it, sometimes it's us, but like someone will do something on stage, we're all watching from the wings, and whatever the actor does on stage is so funny that we can't contain ourselves backstage. And then we realize, oh, we're, they can hear us <laughs> while the show's going on. 
right now. Nobody nobody enjoys the show more than we do. <laughs> I have to say, I honestly, when Stevie Agee was cinnamon and I had to get through watching Stevie Agee go sharpen the pony and looking at Paul F. Tompkins and both of us dying and not being able to regain our composure, that was one of the highlights of my That's personal career. That's why that career. was two hours long, is because you guys <laughs> laughed for like an hour. Yeah, that was one of my favorite moments of anything I've ever done, I think. I think the mistake you made was the eye contact, <laughs> because if you're starting to break, yeah. and someone else is about to break on stage, and you catch each other's eyes, you're done. Like, yeah, no, There was, was one when Paget and I, something cracked one of us up, and we had to just stand. It was uh, Carlisle Ravencastle. Carlisle Ravencastle. <laughs> And we had to stand behind our scripts, just dying laughing. And she's looking at me with anger in her eyes, like. <laughs> but we're both just peeing, laughing. And I have a great photo of, it's just me and Paget on stage with scripts over our faces. I had a time in New York, which some of you may know this story. I was backstage talking with Ben Blacker during Beyond Belief at I'm in the it. House I'm in the story. In Brooklyn. And I missed an entrance as the narrator, which doesn't happen very often. But uh, Paget Paget stepped up to the mic and covered for me, and uh, so all of a sudden we're talking and we hear we were like we were yeah. so not present. We were talking no. about baseball. Yeah, we were like, talking we were about baseball. Not present at all. It was yeah. the biggest mistake. And then all of a sudden we heard like <laughs> like that was her version of that spooky narrator. And she was very like, I, I just, I didn't, I didn't know. I went up and I did it, and I went very much. I, I, I don't know. Did it go all right? But it was great. And that's Way when we fired go. Hal. He, yeah. We found out. Sealed my so own replaceable. <laughs> Via baseball, the career killer. The end. <laughs> are there questions? There are some guys back there. These Nerd HQ volunteers on it. Uh, I just got to watch the concert film for the first time, and it's excellent. Thank, Thank you, you very much Thank for you. it. Thank uh, you. Question for Gagliardi. Yes. Uh, I know the Bins have talked before about Croach's death, and I was wondering what your reaction was about that. Spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. It was two years ago. Yeah. It's been podcast a long time ago. Because <laughs> uh, that really was a sad thing. Uh, it was. It was intense. And, uh, and <laughs> I remember getting the script for that, and when I read the, you know, you get this email of the script, and I read through the thing, and I guess you were probably waiting for that phone call, because, as like, I just assume it's Acker, like, hits PDF, send, wait, ring, hello, what? And I was, right? I was mortified, um, but luckily he came back with Force Galactic, no less. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, that was a, a sad, intense moment in the show that is usually filled with uh, sad, intense moments. It was wonderful to, uh, to hear the audience uh, reaction to that death. It, a room full of 250 people, all sounding punched in the gut at once, <laughs> was a testament to the performance of Mark Aguilar. Oh. It was really fun. You guys are they heartless. Like you. Heartless bastards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't love anything. It's a valuable <laughs> lesson. <laughs> that was for the kid. <laughs> He's too drunk to take it in. Yeah. <laughs> Better they hear it here than on the street. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Is there a question? There was, there was, there were like so many people with their hands up. Is there a microphone? Uh, hi guys, this is for Aaron. Um, some of the other shows that other people involved with Thrilling Metro Hour have done have had little Easter eggs or maybe accidental or on purpose. What are the chances that the 100 will have, or has there been an Easter egg related to Thrilling Adventure Hour? Uh, yeah, there has not been any uh, Easter eggs of Thrilling Adventure Hour in the 100 yet. But now, first of all, you know how funny that show is. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's what's known for its jokes, obviously. Uh, but no, I, now that you say that, maybe I'll try to, to tuck one in. I hadn't uh, ever considered it. Um, you guys keep it a secret. This isn't being broadcast anywhere, is it? No. There's one up here, wasn't there? So, work juice. Is there a story? Will you stand up? Oh. Uh, work juice. Is there a story behind how that came to be? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> uh, oh, man. All right, so we wrote a spec Drew Carey like script. 15 years yeah, ago. 100 years ago. Uh, and the, uh, 
the the bit was uh, how uh, how much do you want to get into this bit? Go it was I I don't remember, so I'm curious to hear oh, it. You were, you did it was all like, I remember. Let me give you this baseline. Is like when Ben and I write something together, we usually pass drafts back and forth. We don't like sit in a room and type together because that's inefficient. So and weird. If you write that way, you're yeah, wrong. Yeah, no, those those people are weirdos. <laughs> Um, there's something wrong with their marriages. What? You need a bigger keyboard. That's <laughs> um, pro tip. So, like, when, when either of us has a turn at the draft, we know that our job is to make the other one laugh. Right. So we wrote, this is back in old Hollywood, where you would write, in order to get a writing job, a sample of an existing television show. So we wrote a Drew Carey script, Drew Carey show script, where it was a body-switching episode. So Drew and Mimi are in each other's bodies, and it's time for performance. A lot of Drew Carey fans here. A lot of big, big Drew Carey show <laughs> crowd. And in order to just throw Drew under... No offense. Oh, absolutely. None taken. Some intended. <laughs> in order to throw him under the bus in her performance review in Drew's body, Mimi says that she was there at work all night licking the work juice off of phones. <laughs> and it was really gross. <laughs> and it made me laugh. And meanwhile, we were writing a script about a coffee shop and right. couldn't come up with a name for a coffee shop and we had work juice right there. And we, and we would meet like in the mornings, this is when we were young, so we could get up and actually like do some work in the mornings, meet, meet at a coffee shop to write our script about a coffee shop. And I think, I think one of us said to them, like, I can't get this done, I gotta get some work juice in me. And that was it, and it just, it made us laugh over the years, and we're like, oh my God, what if we treat this seriously? We and need a like, fake sponsor for a fake radio yeah. show. And then now we have actually named our production company after it, which is the dumbest thing. <laughs> and for a while, you had actual work juice coffee. We did. Made. That's uh, right. Some, I, don't think, I don't think it's I, happening anymore, but it was no. around. It was, it was like in the fake ad that we wrote. It was the most caffeine-dense yeah. legally available on the market. They, that is true. They, they, this roaster in, I want to say, North Dakota or South Dakota, you know, known for their coffee. <laughs> Also uh, known for their work juice, apparently. Yeah, exactly. Well, they, they don't have too much going on. I'm sorry, I love you, South Dakota. Um, but this roaster sent us samples of like increasing amounts of caffeine. And we're like, give us the one with the most. This is the best. Because you tried them all at once, and you had them all in one sitting. We did. We actually did a test. By the time that you got to that point, you were like, fine, this one. <laughs> we had a bunch of the work juice players over uh, for uh, a Oh, you tasting. did? Yeah. You know, like pa the good ones. It's Paul, cool. Padgett, <laughs> Mark Evan Jackson. Like, Craig was, there. Barely Craig was there for sure, I believe. Yeah, Aaron was there, absolutely. It's cool. Annie and I were playing on a virtual reality video game somewhere, so. I didn't get into that one either. Well, we had you on the list, but your name was spelled wrong. <laughs> Where is Harl Larblin? We can, we can do 17 more minutes on the work juice name, but are there other questions? Uh, my name's Tatiana from Orange County. Um, last year when you announced that you were going to stop doing the live radio shows, I think that it had been discussed that there were other things on the forefront. I know some of that was the comics. Um, is there any... Now available from Image. Yes, Two not at comics. the booth at Comic-Con, though. No, because they're, they're only selling trades, unfortunately. Yeah. But you can get them on Comixology, and you can get them in your local comic book shop. Um, and I was just wondering if there's anything else that's happening in the pipeline for the characters that we love that we will be losing soon. You're not, they never go away. You're not losing them. First of all, there are 250 episodes of the podcast. If there were a TV show that you loved that did 250 episodes, you would be psyched. Uh, unless it was psych. <laughs> then you'd be thrilled. Tim Amundsen's a close personal friend. Uh, yeah, the comics are ongoing. As Mark mentioned, we're doing uh, adaptations of the comics, live reads of the comics in New York, around New York Comic Con. Um, we're doing a night of Beyond Belief and a night of Sparks Nevada, so that should be a lot of fun, uh, October 9th and 10th. We're doing a bunch of stuff that week. Um, we're doing this all-new show at PodFest, which you guys have never seen, which we're excited to bring you. Um, other than that, I, I can just say we're continuing to explore other media. Um, the thing about doing yeah. the show is it's always just like throw the sheet on the barn. Like you, we can do a live stage show, and we write it, we do it, we put it up. 
Hollywood is different. Hollywood is, we have to pitch it, we have to present it, the people we tell have to tell their dads, and they have to like, <laughs> decide if they want to spend the money. Are you pitching it. to children? <laughs> it would be going much better if we were pitching to children. Uh, so it's, it's just a long process of trying to get anything done with, uh, with the standard Hollywood. And, and to do it right. I mean, that's what it comes down to, is like we could sell this off and probably not be involved. Parts or whatever. And, yeah, and not have Paul and Padgett involved or whatever, but we really want to serve the audience that has grown with us uh, as we bring parts of the show to other media. So th and that's important to us. So that means it's going to take a little longer, but it's going to be worth it. Are there plans for a virtual reality version of the oh, show? Because oh, Arden was oh. asking about it earlier. For I like know. Jason Statham asked me when I was talking to him in my <laughs> alternate reality. He's a big fan. He loves your work. He, he loves, loves your work. work. He loves your work. <laughs> for a week and a half, there was an insane millionaire who was like, we should do this. This is actually true. reality. Wait, what? An immersive. Yes. He was, it was great because he said, an immersive beyond belief experience where you can see, you just turn your head and see Mars. Oh. <laughs> We're was like, he on peyote in. when he said that? <laughs> this, that is absolutely true. We pitched to an insane millionaire. <laughs> this is 100% true. It was, it was not Hodgman doing a character. <laughs> but he was barefoot. Can we write that show? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yes. Oh. This is how it goes, you guys. This is how it's been for 10 years. I get excited about something. I want to do it right away. He says no. 10 years. The people on the stage know it is the opposite that is true. <laughs> that was freaky. What? <laughs> yeah, right there. Okay, hi. Thank you very much for being here. I got this. Um, <laughs> Apparently. I've been asleep for like 11 minutes. <laughs> Moderation begins with hey, and you, and talk. <laughs> Um, just kind of expanding on what the previous question was, um, you guys are obviously still tag teaming, but I wanted to know what was uh, going on in the future for the, the rest of the folks going on here. What, what projects are coming up? They have nothing. They're just waiting. Absolutely. They're nothing without us. Waiting for us. That's great. Actually, uh, Hal Lovelin and I have a new podcast. Uh, you got that? We got this. Uh, is the name of our podcast. Uh, we provide uh, we provide definitive answers for dumb debates. Uh, should you put ketchup on a hot dog? Should you no. have your toilet paper overhand or underhand? Overhand. 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 We will have a we will have an Disgusting. episode that is a lightning round with Ben Acker. Uh, we're very excited about. Yes, coming soon to a major podcasting network near you. Maximum fun. <laughs> Maximum. Can we fun. announce that. Is this yeah. an exclusive? Oh. Nerd HQ <laughs> exclusive. Nerd HQ exclusive. Nerd HQ exclusive. We're with Maximum Fun now. Ooh. Yeah. Thank you. What's, hey, Mark, what's Jesse Thorne really like? You guys, did any of you guys know he's completely deaf and blind? <laughs> he's been faking it this whole time. I have no idea how he does it. I met with him and guided him around a block of Los Angeles. Does he have heightened senses? That Is he going test. by taste? <laughs> He just grabbed my hand and went, wah, well, at he, one point. No, no, I'm trying to take you away from that. Come on. That's Aaron, the only thing that's happening. Hey, Aaron, what are you doing? Oh, hello. Uh, I, I currently write and produce a show called The Hundred. Uh, so if you don't know it, check it out. Season one's on Netflix. Season two coming to Netflix, I believe, in the fall. I don't know the exact date. Uh, and on DVD as well. Season three, 2016. So check it out. I will be on the upcoming Mr. Shows prequel or <laughs> post sequel. Sequel. Try again. Sequel? Go back. Try again. Uh, I will be on the upcoming Mr. Show sequel with Bob and David on Netflix, and uh, and I'm on Fresh Off the Boat, and I like to do at midnight, and I tour with my stand-up. So come see me. I actually played at that mall here, San Diego. That's a good club at that mall. Anyway. Oh, there's a really nice one downtown, American Comedy Company. Yeah, that, that, it's yeah, good. It's, so it's really good. good. It's really good, yeah. Fun crowds. I met the guy who, I was like, this guy who sat in the front row and I was kind of joking with him and it turned out he owns Legoland and has 10 kids. <laughs> I tried to get him to adopt me or marry me, but he was not interested in either. <laughs> Milady. I am on a uh, person of interest, which <laughs> And I don't think we know exactly when we're coming back for season five, but sometime, maybe sometime this year. <laughs> so, yeah, so 
that's that. <laughs> Check your local listings. <laughs> Hi, guys. Wait. You got it. This is going to go Can great. Can you hear me? Cool. All right, this is a question for the Benz. Uh, the live show usually started with Sparks and ended with Beyond Belief. What was the um, decision-making process about what the middle segment was going to be for each show? It varied between um, who we needed to serve in the cast and what ideas we had. So usually Craig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what we hadn't done in a while. Yeah. I wish there was a better, more entertaining no, that's, That is true. Or, yeah. you know, I mean, occasionally it was like we would get excited about a Captain Laser Beam idea or we would get excited about a, a Colonel TikTok. We would always get excited about a Moonshine Holler, but they were so hard to write. And that's why they're only like... you wrote them in iambic pentameter <laughs> once. We Just may have made it hard on our, ourselves. I, I remember going to see some movie with you, Acker, and in the, you're like, before the movie started, you said, I, I have the last moment of a moonshine holler. And you pitched it to me, and I was like, oh, God, that's really good. And you're like, I just got to write it now. Yeah. I just got to write the whole... But you did had, I? You did. It was the one that was, ended with the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, it was three years later. That proof is in the pudding episode. We kicked around for so long because we knew that was a funny ending to it and it was right on the moonshine holler, like how the show works. But we could not build that episode. Uh, and and from when we finally did, I'm glad, you know, sometimes it has to take that long. The Beyond Belief that we just put out uh, that we did at our anniversary show, which was about like old Hollywood ghosts, uh, haunting Frank and Sadie. That's another one that, like, Ben had the core of that idea for a long, long time. We had talked about it even in the M-Bar days, like, eight years ago. Uh, and it was just a story that we couldn't... It, it was never quite working. Uh, and then I think we needed a story. <laughs> it came as close to working as ever in the, <laughs> in the episode that went out. Yeah, uh, and it came out great. I mean, it was that was an especially fun show because we had just the work juice players. So we kind of gave everybody new stuff to do and that, that was really cool. Yeah, hey. That one, oh, that guy, then, then when that guy, and then that lady. This is gonna go great, be brave, I believe in you. Okay. Look, yeah, yeah, Aisha's look just calm. noticing there are people here. <laughs> I cannot see guy. through this wig, by the way. <laughs> That's but, a wig? It, it, yes, no, I'm like one of those dolls where you pull a string and all of a sudden an afro pops out. Later in the day, I'm going to grow a penis. Sorry, kid. Go ahead. Better, better he finds out now. <laughs> <laughs> I, only, I, only, I only grow it when I have to pee. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I, I grew up on old-time radio, and I was just curious from both the performance and a writing point of view, what were the biggest differences and ahas from it? <laughs> He's like 40. Where did you grow up on old-time radio? <laughs> We're the same age. Old-time radio to you is like the Daz band. What the fuck are you talking <laughs> He just listened to the oldie stations, <laughs> which is now like playing like salt and pepper. Right, he cranked up the radio. He's like, I'm gonna get the radio going any minute, huh? It's gonna be, uh, 22, hey, do. <laughs> I don't know anything about old-time radio, clearly. Well, that makes all of us. <laughs> yeah, we totally faked it. <laughs> It was always our idea of what old-time radio might be in the way that, like, the Indiana Jones movies are not recreations of the serials that inspired them, but are sort of the, the, more fun, the most fun version and most contemporary version of what that old conceit might be. The end. But the shadow's cool. <laughs> I can't get down with the shadow just because it's you so old. You can't get old. down with the shadow? I can't get down with the shadow because it's so old that you listen to an episode and it's like... Oh, no, 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 no. And they're like, oh, and they're like I, this was recorded in 1906. <laughs> I have a real uh, hatred of that. You're shit, sexist though. against 1906. <laughs> there I might be something wrong with your speakers. <laughs> yeah, get the high def. Yeah. Uh, you can afford it. You're with Maximum Fun now. <laughs> that lady, that lady. Uh, my question is for Amy. Um, I was wondering, out of all the characters you've played, uh, which one would you most want to hang out with, and what would you do? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what characters did I play? No, just <laughs> in I, your whole career. Your, your whole career. career. Not, oh, yeah. On the show, or in my... Wait, what are we talking in about? In your whole career. That'll make it easier. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, we're talking thrilling adventure. No, no, no. Whatever no, you want. Me, you. We're talking me you. in real life. Okay. IRL. What, what was the question? <laughs> You want a water or something? I might. No. 
what character would I like to hang out with that I've played? You can most pick Arden the, if you want. Most of the characters I've played have ended up killing people, so that's not, <laughs> not a good start. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I guess Fred would be, you know. Be, she seems pretty nice. <laughs> good answer. Arden, same question. Which of Amy's characters would you like to... <laughs> I want to hang out with the one that kills the most and just see if I can take her down because of my self-defense class. Stone Cold Killer. Good answer. I don't, I don't let's think just, let's go down the line. No. That is Aaron? the best super fight ever. Aaron, which oh. of your characters would you like to play? Oh, my characters? I think it would have to be Amy. <laughs> Great. Actually, I, my first part in college, I, would, I could play. I did, Aaron wrote the play that I first... What is that? What, how would you say that? Uh, my, well, I, I don't know. My, the first play I ever wrote was for you and starred you, starred Amy. So that, that's where we met back in the day. Yeah. And that was a good part. I it was a good part. Her. You were quite good in it. You're, this is the first time they've seen each other since. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> Catch up later. <laughs> I thought we were going down the line, I we were going but down somehow the line. that just Hell. petered oh, no, out. We, yeah. Hell, Hell's been fired. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hell, what character He's leaving or you for maximum Hell, fun. Hell, Hell. What character or something? <laughs> oh, jeez. Phil Fathom. All right. <laughs> right? Thank you. Mark? Uh, Mark, same question. <laughs> I would love Fathom. with Croach. He would be unbearable. <laughs> uh, no, it, Croach the Tracker, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. What question would you ask Croach the Tracker? Yeah. I'd like to speak to Croach the Tracker right now. Human designated Ben, what would you like to speak of? What's your favorite curse word? <laughs> Bagropa. Did you see I had to tell him that? <laughs> Croach can't say, they can't do anything on their own. No! <laughs> Croach is so hard to improvise in, because we did this thing with Paul F. where we were improvising as Sparks and Croach, and I started to speak in this, in this stilted Martian way uh, that Croach speaks, and I was like, oh my God, this is really hard unless Acker and Blacker have handed me a thing, and I'm like, ah, just read what's on a page. So kudos other, to you guys. Do you know the other Lipton questions? The other Lipton questions? Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> is there uh, heaven and, and uh, well, if that's you the arrived at the gates? Finale. You, that's blah, the finale. That's the last one. What's your favorite curse word? Yeah. Tell me something awesome about myself that I don't know. That's one. <laughs> that's one of James Lipton's. Yeah, that's, one, that's James Lipton's. That's what James Lipton is thinking. Yeah. He's like, just the subtext. Ad of every adulate. Question. Adulate me. And then he puts a question mark on the end. Adulate me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody can look adulate up after the show. <laughs> This is a 40-year-old audience, they get it. Yeah, that, well, that guy back there's like 110, because he <laughs> grew up on old-time radio. He looks great, he looks great. <laughs> really good. I love your work. He's been I love dead your work. for 40 years. <laughs> looks great. He bought that bed from Michael Jackson after he died. <laughs> what, you oh, rather he come on, I didn't kill years? him. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I think we might have time for one more question, so let's try to get it in. Make it a good one. Guys, yeah, don't blow it. Oh, a lot of pressure. I believe in you. It's your time to shine, audience. You got this. Okay. This is happening. So, um, having been lucky enough to go to several of the live performances, um, <laughs> having been able to go to several live performances, I, uh, one of the things that really impressed me was the way the cast would come out to the patio, and you really... I mean, everybody was always so nice and took pictures. And how, how did that, did that, was that just a natural development of the chemistry that you guys had? Or was there a conscious, a conscious thought to say, we want to be people that connect with these, with our audience? Those weren't real, those were, we hired uh, yeah. lookalikes. That was a virtual Jason reality. Ritter. You when were in a helmet the whole Sorry. time. I mean, yeah. and even, even the guest stars, I mean, Jason Ritter would come out and, and I mean, everybody, Nathan Fillion, the master of the selfie. How did that, how'd that come about? When, when we did the show at Embar, there was literally nowhere to go. There was one exit, we were all in a giant room. So after the show, we would all wind up on the patio and naturally you would speak to people who had just seen the show, which at the time were uh, a lot of acquaintances and then we started to build a fan base and we were sort of packing it. So we would see the same people month after month. Um, and then when we moved to Largo, it just 
sort of grew out of that. We weren't we, we weren't accustomed. Felt the, we felt the distance. Like we yeah. wanted to be able to like, reach out to people after the show. Yeah, and we were accustomed to afterwards. You go say hi to the people who were in the show. And Mark and I, uh, when we did shows together at Second City, you would come out and say hi to people afterwards. So I don't think it felt odd to anybody to to make that transition. And over the course of the five or six years we did the show at Largo, we would see the same people over and over again. So it, it's much there's much less distance. Yeah. between us and the people who come see the show. Look, this show would not be possible were it not for the love of everyone involved, from it, us and Aaron to the actors, to the musicians, to the fans. Uh, you guys made this show possible, uh, and we cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming. Give it up for the Thrilling Adventure Hour. Ben Acker, Ben Blacker, Mark Gagliardi, Hal Wurzel. Arden Ryan <laughs> and Amy Acker! Thank you, Aisha. <laughs>